Welcome back to the most news in the morning. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll and watercolors. <laughs> well, they may rock it out on stage, but in their downtime, some of your favorite musicians are actually trading their guitar picks for paintbrushes. Lola Oganaki shows us their B-side. <laughs> Leonard Skinner drummer Michael Cardelloni has been banging the skin since he was nine, but he's been painting since he was four. I've been working on this painting for probably the past four months. Cardelloni is rarely without his paints. He even takes small canvases on the road. And when he trades his sticks for brushes, it's equal parts meditation and therapy. You think of rockers, you think sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, they do that. I don't think of you with a canvas in your room, slowly but surely working on a piece. It's a few hours during the day where I can recharge because then that night, it's going to go back to the, you know, kickboxing with drumsticks that I do for a living. Cardelloni isn't alone. Musicians like Ringo Starr and Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stones also know how to move the paint. The walls of the Pop International Gallery in downtown Manhattan are covered with artwork by rockers. How much does something like this sell for? Ronnie Wood has a huge following of collectors, who, serious collectors who buy his work. And paintings of his go for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Do you know if any of these artists paint to their music? So is Ringo like, help, I need someone. <laughs> I need somebody. I didn't specifically ask Ringo that question, but I did ask Ronnie Wood. What did he say? He listens to classical music. Paul Stanley of Kiss has painted his face for nearly 35 years. He picked up art in high school, but he was no Picasso. I probably deserve a statue out front because I have the dubious distinction of having failed art there. After I got this done, I said, okay, it's out of my system. <laughs> When I paint, it's almost like uh, going on a trip without a road map. I really have no idea where I'm going, which makes the trip that much more exciting. What about critics who may say, oh, well, he's getting all this notoriety because he's a Leonard Skinner? Well, I would say um, I could not be more proud of being a Leonard Skinner, and I'm absolutely using that to open doors with my art. Why not? You know, it really makes you think, I mean, if, you, if you're musically inclined and you have that talent, did, does it just spread to the other talents as well? Because that's some gorgeous art. It is gorgeous. And you know what they say? They're creative people. Right. And however it manifests itself, it manifests itself. So sometimes they decided, like, look, I want to paint, and they go for it. And they have the time. When they're in their hotel rooms, rather than trashing their hotel rooms, they're in there <laughs> painting, especially, especially Mr. Cardelloni. He's in there, and some of his Leonard Skinner bandmates come in and critique his work, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> but it, 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 it's lucrative as well, as you said, uh, as you showed us, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some of these paintings. Are those, going little, for. Uh, those little, those uh, little uh, pads of his uh, uh, snapshots from his life on the road, Car Cardelloni's work. Those pieces sell for ten thousand dollars each. He doesn't need the money, but hey, it's a great side gig, isn't it? Not bad, sure <laughs> is. Lola, thanks so much. Thank you. It's fifty-three minutes after the hour.